the Elite Ramp of Power Test I promised everyone I would do. It's taken me a few days, here it is. So the delay here is I wanted to check with Elite the best way I could have this set up for the most accurate power readings against my Quark. I didn't want to just jump on it and give it a roll and not have the tire pressure right and have the pressure on the trainer right or something like that. Now they're all pretty standard things to get right. I just wanted to be absolutely sure this was going to be a correct representation of the trainer because a lot of people want to know how accurate this thing is. Out of the box, it was within about 10 to 20 watts out of the box, depending on the step test. I really wasn't happy with how it was all set up. So I've checked the tire pressure. I've checked absolutely everything on the system. I've put a new tire on. I've run some tests today and I've been pretty impressed with how it's held up. So the details, the ramper is not a power meter. It's a power estimator based on the speed of the flywheel at the back and the resistance it applies, a lot of mathematics involved. So you're not gonna have the spikes and dips like you would a strain gauge. You'd have more of a smoother curve as you'll see in a few moments with the graphs that I'll put up on screen. The team at Elite have mentioned the calibration process will be part of the mobile app soon. This is gonna make life a lot easier. I've gone and done this the hard way. We've got a little software tool that we run under Windows and we pick three points that you run at a certain speed, check the power against your quark. Anyway, I'll save you the details. So the things I had to make sure of is the tire pressure was correct, the ramper resistance was set correctly, everything was warmed up, the quark was then zeroed and make sure everything was right. I performed the tests and then straight away I performed the step test. Again, the process will be much easier once it's implemented in the mobile app. It could almost be automated. I'm theorizing here, but it may be right at this speed, match your power meter here, right at this speed, match your power meter here, right at this speed, match your power meter here, and we're done. It could be as simple as that. We'll see what they come up with in the software in the future. As mentioned, there's a lot of factors involved in getting this correct. Simply, something as simple as tire pressure, tire wear, humidity, temperature, bearing wear, you name it, there's a, there's a ton. I, I won't even go into the whole lot. But the best you can do is get it right for your environment and keep those variables the same every single time. I'll stop rambling. So first up was the JRA test, just riding along. First five minutes, just ticking along at about 110, 120 watts. The numbers, spot on. I'll put the graph up here. Then I ramped it up in the 5311 and really amped up that rear flywheel. So it wasn't really in smart trainer mode, it was just in standard dumb trainer mode. When that thing starts spinning really, really high, yeah, the laws of physics start falling apart in regards to its estimation. Cadence, a little bit all over the shop, it can't pick this sort of the wave of cadence going on. And the power accuracy started separating as well. But that's a given, look, this was a certain edge test at high cadence, high revolution, maximum stress on the system, it wasn't in smart trainer mode. So that's sort of what I expect anyway out of a power estimator versus a power meter. Okay, 10 minute step test. The process was, I actually did Slane's step test on Zwift here, but rather than go two and a half minutes every 25 watt bin, I went one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. So we've started off at 150 watts and we tracked all the way through to 375 watts at 25 watt steps, 60 second increments. The numbers were good, really good. This did exactly what I expected. The calibration process was good and straight into the tests, the numbers tracked well within a respectable range. I'm talking very, very small percents. Let's have a look at those numbers now. What you can see here is the quark is very spiky and very jumpy. Um, and the ramper itself is very smooth, as to be expected. But once I actually select every one of these ranges, every minute range, they were within a few watts of each other. Okay, disclaimers, your mileage may vary, literally. Think of it as uh, at the factory, they'll have a bell curve of where most people's tires will be, where most people will have their pressures set, um, and most people's environments. There'll be a curve there and they'll just jump right in the, they'll try and make it as good for everyone. So out of the box, you'll be near enough. You'll be close. If you follow all the steps that they recommend in the manual, it'll be pretty close. But for me, I just wanted to line those up straight down the line, as close as possible to the quark that I have, because that's my grounding, I guess, for what zero and what 100 and what 200 and above. It worked really, really well for me. So once the app is out, and they make this process a lot easier to calibrate. Look, I'll have a lot more confidence in saying, yes, absolutely, this is correct. Look, there's gonna be edge cases as well. Sprinting and spikes, there's gonna be some high cadence stuff that it might not quite match with, 
But that's to be expected in any trainer like this that isn't a strain gauge, it's a power estimator. So for me, that's 4.5 out of 5 thumbs up. Not that I have a rating system, but let's go with that for now. Um, really happy with the unit. Um, I'd have no hassles at all lending this out to people who want to experience uh, what a smart train is about. And uh, I'm sure they'd absolutely enjoy it. Let's go. Hump day ride. See you soon. Thanks for watching.